Hi, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Patrick Xu, and I am the The Tech Tech Lead. Our topic today is how to learn to code. And there's really only one skill that you need to have to learn to code. Um, And generally, people either have this skill or not. And that is really the ability to just sit at the computer for many hours at a time. All engineers know that there is something called the zone, where they basically just sit at a computer uninterrupted for long periods of time, and that's how they are able to put together complex thoughts, chain together many pieces of logic, and basically put a program together. And this is a habit that a lot of people don't have. Like they're, they sit down for 10 minutes at a time, they don't really have a desk maybe, they're like watching TV as they're using their laptop and then checking their phones all the time, and then they gotta get up and bake a cupcake, and then go walk the dog, and then they gotta go drive out and do an errand, go shopping, come back, and then they gotta go uh, meet up with their friends, and each time they have maybe 10-20 minutes at the computer, and it's just not enough time to really sit down and focus. So, if you can get into the habit of saying, you're just gonna block out, say, 4 hours in an evening, grab a cup of tea, and then really just sit down and focus on staring at the computer for this amount of time, then I think you'll be able to develop that habit. And and it's even better if you can block off like an entire afternoon and just give a whole day to it. Um, And that is how you'll basically be able to learn. And basically software engineering is just all about learning over and over again. It's, It's kind of an interesting career because it's not like being a lawyer or doctor where over time your experience just builds and builds. And then when you're like a 60 year old doctor or lawyer, you're just so experienced and you can charge huge amounts of money. Now, for software engineering, when you become like a 60-year-old guy, you're probably outdated. Now, this isn't really necessarily about ageism. It's more about many people just decide to stagnate and they stop learning. If you can continue learning and keeping up with new technology as it changes over the many years, then you're going to be good, generally. So this is really about developing the ability to learn. And that ability to learn needs to be done over long periods of time sitting in front of the computer. And you know, one tip I have is I will usually just get some really good music and I'll, it'll make me want to sit down at the computer so I can listen to that music. And then I'll just listen to it and then I'll just focus on whatever it is I'm doing. I'd also say that um, a lot of normal people don't have the ability to just sit down for many hours at a time and start the computer. like. I'm not even sure if it's really something healthy to be doing. Usually it's the people at school who don't have a lot of friends, who don't get invited to the cool parties. And so then they just sit at home by themselves and they've got nothing better to do except to learn, basically get good at computer coding. So like if you're kind of a popular person or um, you've got a lot of events and cool things going on in your life, then you're probably going to find it to be very difficult to just force yourself to just sit at home and ignore all those other events. Um, for me, I'm the type of person who really enjoys being at home and not doing a lot of things. Like given the choice, I might just sit at home for like a whole month and I might go out once a, once a month. You know, I just, um, I don't feel a need to be going out shopping and like going to the mall every day. Like, it's just not that interesting to me. I remember when I was in high school, I wasn't the smartest kid. Like I was pretty smart, but there were these other kids who were much smarter than me. And they would always be getting like A pluses on all the exams. And then we all went to college. And since it was kind of trendy at the time to apply to computer science, a lot of them did that. And basically by the end of the first year, all of them dropped out. And I was like the only person left from my high school who was actually studying computer science in the program. That first class is called the weeder class because it's intentionally made to be difficult and just filter out a lot of students and basically give them bad grades so they're forced to drop out. Meanwhile, for me, I just really enjoyed that course. I got like an A plus in it. And I think the reason is that a lot of these people were probably very good at normal studying. Like they could read a book, they could memorize it, they could do their homework, but they may not have had that culture of sitting in front of a computer for long periods of time. And that was something that at least for me, I had, I have been actually coding since elementary school. And meanwhile, I think a lot of these other kids, they really had no clue what they were getting themselves into. They thought it was going to be like uh, studying physics or chemistry or biology or something like that. But computer science is a whole different 
culture and it requires that computer culture. Now, when you actually get into the computer science courses, it may surprise you to hear that the professors don't actually teach you any programming languages at all. So language syntax, like how to code in Python, C++, Java, JavaScript, uh, PHP, or Objective-C, all of that stuff, they don't really, no one, nobody teaches you that. So if you were thinking that when you get into college, somebody's actually going to sit down and teach you all these languages, that's not the case. No one ever held any engineer's hand like that. Everybody who learned how to code generally had to do it by themselves. And they're all self-taught in that sense. So don't wait to be taught by somebody. And that's just how it is. And you just got to keep self-teaching yourself. So if you don't have that self-teaching culture, that initiative, then you need to be able to develop that. Okay, now hold on. Let me just clarify that there are some courses that can teach you these languages if you actually need the help, but most four-year degree college programs will not be teaching you that. These are things that you might learn in, say, high school courses or community college courses. Um, and I think a lot of people maybe think that, well, the people who actually got into a computer science program and maybe you, like you didn't, for example, maybe you're thinking that they were actually taught this stuff. No one was taught this stuff. What people are actually taught in these courses is the, the supposed fundamentals, which are like algorithms, data structures, how operating systems and compilers work, databases. Um, but probably the only course that you really need to know are like data structures and algorithms. And you know, you can keep in mind that each of these courses is just basically one textbook. So if you were to read uh, two to three textbooks, you'll basically be covered and that'll get you going. And in reality, a lot of computer science, you don't really need to know these crazy data structures and algorithms. Like they'll tell you how to implement a hash table, but in reality, no one really implements a hash table. They just use it. And, and basically if you were to do the algorithms course and understand time-space analysis, like how efficient these data structures are, then you're gonna be able to use them fine. Um, and there's not that much holding you back then. Like, so I think you can get very far even teaching yourself on your own. Although uh, that's not to say that a college degree is useless. Like a college degree is actually incredibly valuable, I think, simply because um, it's so difficult for students to stand out. The competition is so tough that having that college degree just elevates you one level up and just makes everything so much easier for you to land your first job compared to having nothing and trying to prove to people that you may be qualified even though there's tons of other people who may have some degree who's competing for that same job. Basically after that, I think like, you know, you have to ask yourself why you're learning to code and there could be a variety of goals. Maybe you want to build a project for yourself. Maybe you're just curious. But if your goal is to eventually get a job as a software engineer in some company, then I would say that your goal is going to be to get something on your resume. And the best way to do that is probably just to make some personal projects. Um, as you're starting out, it's gonna be difficult to get anyone to hire you. So think about some cool projects that you can make and set make that your goal to make it and then just try to create it. And as you're doing it, you can learn that new language, learn some fundamentals and when you finish it, you can put that project on your resume and then you know, make sure you can be able to explain about whatever impact it had. You know, like if you could have a website or something to show it, that would be pretty nice. And if you could get a few users, that would be even better. As for what track to go into, I might recommend web development as one way to quickly get going. Like you learn HTML, JavaScript, maybe either PHP or Python as a backend language, and that'll quickly get you going. And that's really all you need to be able to start creating web complete uh, web applications and you know these projects you can basically put on your resume and get you started another option i might recommend is mobile development which is pretty trendy nowadays and i would say that in, in the past ios development has been seen as trendy but in recent times android development has actually been skyrocketing like if you check the charts android growth is growing really fast so i think that the demand for android developers should be going up Anyway, I think that pretty much captures what I'm trying to say, which is that no one's really there to hold your hand throughout all this. It's not like when you start a job, you get a pair programmer and together you're programming with a mentor and people are watching your screen and going through each step together. I mean, there are a few jobs that actually do a lot of the pair programming, but most of the jobs that I've seen, they just give you access to the code base 
And there's usually a lot of crazy technology and languages in there that even experienced engineers may not really be familiar with. And they just need to start digging through and teaching themselves how to get through it all. What it really takes is you gotta really just be able to pour yourself like a cup of tea or coffee and sit down for a few hours and just really try to learn the code by yourself. There's, you know, even in, in industry, there's even less documentation than what you see uh, online usually. Like the code might be messy, there may be really poor documentation, and people just need to have that tinker mindset and just go in there and dig in and take a look. You know, that's the culture, that's how it is. There's no true one correct way to do any of this. I would recommend that as a beginner, you can probably even ignore the whole algorithm fundamental track at first. You might get into it eventually, but like if you were to pick up a book on how to do web development in PHP or Python, or how to do Android or iOS development, and then just go through that book, it'll probably get you set up and you really just need to be willing to put in the time and effort to do it. And I think that many times I'll, I'll basically just see people and just, just looking at the way they act, like how social, you know, maybe if people don't seem like the type of person who would be able to sit down and just really study a computer, like I can already tell that they don't really have that culture of the programmer. Like you need to be able to develop that culture and get into the zone, sit down for many hours at a time. And I think that's the one skill that uh, a lot of people probably need to hone more on if they want to get serious into coding. So that'll do it for this episode. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you next time. Give it a like and subscribe. Bye.